Hey, welcome to the Dino New Year's party. Hey, everyone you know well is here. Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Raptor, Diplodocus. But there will also be someone new, a guest who will surprise you. You see, paleontologists have discovered a new dinosaur species that was somewhat like the T-Rex, but with a twist. These guys would rather eat a crunchy salad than a juicy steak. Hey, meet this dude. Any guesses on how to pronounce this? Duonychus sacubatri. Thanks, please hold your applause. These are herbivorous guys that belong to the Therizinosaurs. But they had one awesome feature. A feature that showed scientists that Duonychus belonged to a new branch of dinosaur evolution, about which little is known. But hey, let's go back to the dino party, shall we? Here, you can see dinosaurs with different personalities. The T-Rex is a bully and toothy. The Velociraptor seems to be very toxic and moody. The Triceratops, or Stegosaurus, are aggressive but silent. You know, like those guys that don't touch anyone, but it's better not to mess with them. So among them all, the Therizinosaurus is a chill guy that will always help will always keep you company at a party, and will never be annoying. Therizinosaurs lived in what is now Asia and North America during the late Cretaceous period, about 166 million years ago. Their anatomical features made them look more like predators, like the T-Rex. But Therizinosaurs were herbivores, with large crescent-shaped claws. In some species, they reached up to 20 inches. Now imagine how dangerous these monsters would have been had they been carnivorous. But they used their claws to grab tree branches and eat leaves. The Duonychus was quite large, just under 10 feet in length. A hippo was about the same size. And their weight was about 600 pounds, which is almost half the size of a horse. Therizinosaurus had a long mouth, a bit like a duck's nose, and long front paws with three thumbs. But the Duonychus that has been found recently was unique because it only had two fingers on each hand. The two-fingered dinosaur discovery has sparked joy among paleontologists. Okay, two fingers instead of three, whatever, you might think. But it makes a big difference. It shows how dinosaurs evolved. The latest paleontology news reports that the discovery was made in Mongolia. It was the largest preserved claw in history. Its size was about 11 inches, and it had a curved shape. That means it was like a giant banana. The coolest thing was that the claw was covered with keratin. Our nails are made from this material too. Can you imagine? Large lizards that lived tens of millions of years ago had claws with the same composition as our nails. Nature is amazing, isn't it? Do you know this crazy theory that the T-Rex evolved into a chicken and the Velociraptor into an ostrich? There must have been tons of evolutionary changes. But the two-fingered dinosaur discovery offers us a more understandable and more detailed explanation of how dinosaurs evolved. Therizinosaurs had three clawed fingers on each paw. But why did nature get rid of one of them? Scientists believe that it was practical. It's possible that a paw with two fingers was much stronger and more flexible than a paw with three. This way, dinosaurs could grab vegetation and branches, like chameleons do. Scientists have also suggested that the two-fingered long paw helped the dinosaur defend itself, care for its mates, and even play. It's hard to imagine what they could be playing at. Maybe they did high fives or high twos. It would be cool if they had used those paw pliers not only for taking food, but for fighting off predators. And speaking of predators, the T-Rex had a similar front paw structure, but its small paws were useless. It would be cool if the Duonychus could box with them or climb trees. Yes, it was an herbivore, but that doesn't mean that other bad dinosaurs could bully it. Let's just think that the Duonychus was kind of weak and formidable to the strong. That's why it would be the most welcome guest at the dinosaur party. But the strangest guest at this party would be the Dino Chirus, named Terrible Hands. The case of the Dionychus shows how dinosaurs evolved from having three-fingered paws to being two-fingered. The Dino Chirus shows that ancient lizards could evolve into a horse or something else. 
It sounds weird, but let's get to know this guy better. In 1965, the arms, hands, and shoulder girdle of an unknown dinosaur was discovered in the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. When paleontologists put the bones together, they got two long, creepy arms. For many years, those arms remained in the museum without a body. It looked funny and a little scary. Each arm was about 8 feet long. This is more than the tallest basketball players. Paleontologists were trying to find other dinosaur body parts in the Gobi Desert, but their attempts were unsuccessful. The Dinochirus became one of the most famous mysteries in paleontology. How big was the owner of such arms? What did it eat? How did it live? This remained unknown until 2014. According to the latest paleontology news about this lizard, a group of scientists from the Korea Institute of Geoscience and Mineral Resources has discovered other well-preserved remains of the Dinochirus. With their help, paleontologists have managed to recreate the lizard's appearance. And that breakthrough has turned out to be much cooler than the two-fingered dinosaur discovery. Are you ready? The Dinochirus was colossal, rather slow, with a horse-like head and a spine that formed something like a hump. It looks super weird, even for a science fiction movie. This new dinosaur species belonged to Ornithomimo soria, Ooh, an ostrich-like species, agile and fast-moving. But not the Dinochirus. Instead of speed and agility, the dinosaur had a large size. It was 36 feet long and weighed 13,200 pounds, which is almost the weight of an adult elephant and the length of half a metro wagon. Despite its size, the Dinochirus was quite harmless. Its long muzzle looked like that of a duck or a horse. It also had no teeth. So for Tyrannosaurs and other predatory giants, it was an easy lunch. And this is not just a guess. Scientists found bite marks on the discovered skeletons of this dinosaur. Seems this poor big dude met some really bad and hungry guys. But what was lunch to the strange lizard itself? It ate almost everything – soft plants, algae, small vertebrates, and fish. It sucked food from the bottom of lakes and rivers with its beak and tongue and swallowed stones to help grind the food. Those stones crushed the pieces of food and thus helped the stomach to digest stuff more easily. The dinosaur used its terrible hands to dig and pick up food from trees in the ground. But the strangest part of its body was its back and tail. The bones at the end of its tail were joined into a single structure called a pygostyle. This thing supports the feathers of modern birds. Now, it's possible that the Dinochirus waved its tail like a fan. And its back had thick bone spikes that stuck up from its spine. Considering that those bones were covered with skin, the whole strange skeleton structure looked like a sail. You know how dinosaurs evolved to have such a strange shape and probably ask yourself, hey, what's the point? Well, scientists believe that the ligaments coming out of the spine help support the dinosaur's heavy belly and legs. To better understand how that could work, imagine cable-stayed bridges. Long vertical beams have many cables that hold the roadway. Similar, the Dinochirus spikes and ligaments help to hold the dinosaur's weight. Now, back at our dino party, it would be a shy, tall dude who accidentally drops a drinking glass and makes you feel awkward. It's lonely. It dreams of finding friends. And it will surely find them. A Diplodocus would make a great buddy. A herbivorous dinosaur with two fingers that looks like a predator and a horse-like giant with two long arms show us how diverse dinosaur evolution can be. T-Rex, Velociraptor, Diplodocus, and others are the superstars of the ancient world. It would be cool if paleontologists could discover new dinosaur species that would remove the old guard from their pedestal of fame. Would you like to see a movie starring the Dinochirus and the Duonychus? Nay, hey, I would. Hundreds of dinosaur species roamed our planet, and researchers give a name to a new type approximately every two weeks. It's not fair to stick to T-Rex, Stegosaurus, Spinosaurus, and other famous sauruses all the time. They've had their chance to shine in the movies and across the internet. 
So let's check out dinosaurs that no one talks about. First on our list is Taurosaurus. The special thing about this dinosaur is that it definitely had one of the largest skulls ever found. It was big because of this frill going from the back of the animal's skull and covering its neck. The frill wasn't there for protection. It was probably just to show off a bit. The bone in the frill was thin and full of holes. As you can see, it's very similar to Triceratops. There are still debates about whether these two are the same species. But more and more studies show that they were more like cousins. They were probably similar in size, but Taurosaurus had a longer head with big openings, as well as longer frill bones with a groove on top. It also had more pairs of horns on the back of the frill. Some like to call Taurosaurus a bull lizard. These fellows were plant eaters that may have lived in social groups. They existed at approximately the same age, but Taurosaurus somehow ended up on the less popular side of the family. Kentrosaurus was a small stegosaurus. It's one of the least cuddly dinosaurs of all time. Its long, thin spikes seemed to be a pretty good defense mechanism. Stegosaurus, on the other hand, had shorter, thicker spikes that were less likely to bend or snap when the animal used them. Now, you wouldn't want to get anywhere near Kentrosaurus, though. Its tail could swing in a big half-circle and hit with a force strong enough to break a human skull. Any volunteers? No? Okay. One scientist used scans of the dino's fossils to make a computer model of its skeleton. The model showed that Kentrosaurus had a flexible neck. It must have been really useful for looking around to see if something interesting was going on or if there was any dangerous animals trying to sneak up. Kentrosaurus typically walked on all four legs with straight hind limbs. The computer model tells us it could spread its front legs out to its sides, too. Maybe it was a way to protect its belly during fights. Stegosauruses, in general, had tails that were like big weights at the back of their bodies. That's why their balance point was closer to their hips. That's also the reason why they could easily stand on their hind legs and swing their tails around. So most people haven't heard of heterodontosaurs, even though their fossils show that dinosaurs got feathers way back before we thought and in groups where we didn't expect it. In 2008, paleontologists identified the first known skull of a baby heterodontosaurus, which was less than 2 inches long, smaller than a tea bag. This baby dinosaur had relatively big eyes and a short snout compared to bigger ones of its kind. Now, what's really interesting is that some scientists used to think that heterodontosaurus's tusks, like those of modern warthogs, only appeared when they were fully grown. But it seems they had them from the early stages of their life. Heterodontosaurus had five fingers on each hand, two of which were opposable. It was a good tool, considering the animal probably ate both plants and meat. Humans have different types of teeth, some for biting, some for chewing, and also canines. But most reptiles have just one kind of teeth. Hydrodontosaurus was special because it had three different types of teeth. Small peg-like ones, big teeth resembling canines, and square-shaped teeth that did the cutting job. Scientists are not entirely sure how this creature used these different types of teeth. Maybe it was for digging up roots, breaking into termite nests, or even defending themselves against dangerous animals. Okay, say this name with me now. Sidacosaurus. She was quite a common dinosaur in its time, but she never still gained popularity. Scientists found out that when these dinosaurs were young, they probably crawled, considering they had longer arms and short legs. But as they got older, between 4 and 6 years old, their hind legs started growing much faster and became much longer than their front legs. So, later in life, they likely didn't move on all fours anymore, but walked on two legs. Inside the stomach of one of these creatures, scientists found pebbles. This shows the animals either had a hard time digesting what it ate, or it didn't chew its food very well. Its beak looks quite familiar. That's how it got its specific name, a parrot lizard. 
It was really strong, and some believe the creature used it to crack and open tough nuts and seeds before the pebbles in its stomach helped mash them up for digestion. These guys might have been good at swimming. They had broad feet, and the shape of their tail could have helped them move in the water relatively easily. Some scientists even believe they might have spent most of their lives swimming in rivers and lakes. In 2004, researchers found something really sweet. 24 young parrot lizards huddled together. They were too big to be hatchlings, so it could be a bunch of teenagers who had left their nests and then formed a group where they could support one another and defend themselves better. But apparently, that plan didn't work out so well. Now, check this one out. Stygimolog, or as they call it, Styx demon. We're looking at a peaceful, plant-eating creature with bony spikes and knobs on its skull. Most scientists believe it was a younger form of this fellow, even though they used to think they were a separate species. Stygimolog is smaller than its more popular cousin, but it's also more robust and has a pretty thick neck. This dinosaur, with small forelimbs and long hind legs, 3 feet high, which is half as high as an average human. That doesn't sound dangerous in the world of giant and fierce dinosaurs, but the animal had a very thick skull roof. Maybe it wasn't the strongest tool to defend itself, but it probably helped in combat with rivals from its own species. They most likely headbutted to win the hearts of their chosen ones. But rivals from its own herd were a piece of cake compared to the predators that might have gone after it. After all, this dino lived at the same time as old T-Rex. Now, when someone tells you to picture a dinosaur, Chisosaurus would probably be the last thing coming to your mind. It looks as if you've put together pieces of random animals and tried to make your friends believe this truly was a real animal that once roamed the Earth. But it's actually a dino, with giant sharp claws on its forelimbs, a bulky body, and a long neck ending with a tiny head. Now, don't let the claws scare you, though. These creatures didn't go after other animals since they were herbivores. But these claws could protect the animal from intruders and predators. The full scientific name of this creature describes it as a giant sloth-like reptile from China. This animal was one of the biggest and oldest members of the group where it belonged, which lived around 115 million years ago. No, I wasn't around then. At first, it was hard to tell which animals were related to this weird-looking dinosaur. But in the 1990s, scientists made a conclusion that they were modified plant-eating theropods, which is similar to carnivorous dinos. They also most likely had feathers and small wings, like some sort of a very big turkey. <laughs> That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.